but you can see the uh, the water level line. Lake pollution. Ah. <laughs> uh, no, only putt putt and no zoom zoom. Something like that. They're staring at me. I can see a few bums from here. look great, eh? Not quite the Simpsons clouds, but they're getting there. That's just typical after you get a nice, uh, the humidity clears and you go into a northerly wind, you get those little clouds. So um, this is going to be fun. We're in Mississauga. We just launched from um, Lake Shore Lakefront Promenade, uh, which is just off Carthro Road, just off the QEW. Um, Port Credit is just to our west and then Toronto's to our uh, east. wind is not too bad on all this it really is gusty down here today we got like wind gusts of like 38 kilometers an hour uh, anyway um, yeah this is part lawn uh been around here many times a lot of memories oh my god anyway we're gonna go over there in a minute that was the uh, that's the entrance to the humber river uh we're gonna have a quick explore up there before we make our way into the uh, city itself the Humber River begins at the Humber Springs Ponds on the Niagara Escarpment in Mono, which is in Dufferin County, and reaches its mouth at Humber Bay on Lake Ontario in the city of Toronto. The river collects from about 750 creeks and tributaries in a fan-shaped area north of Toronto that encompasses portions of Dufferin County, the regional municipality of Peel, Simcoe County, and the regional municipality of York. And that would answer why the water is so mucky. The main road into Toronto City itself is where the QW ends and then becomes a city-owned highway, hence the name change Gardner Expressway. All right, we're into a no-wake zone. up there but I think we won't go as far as that we don't know how deep it's gonna be like I said the water is really really brown this is one of the main runoffs for all the storm drains I guess the Humber River we've got a lot of rain hence it's so bloody mucky so anyway we'll venture back on to uh, Lake Ontario and make our way along over to uh, the city of Toronto I don't know how close I can get to this let's have a look But you can see the uh, the water level line of how high it's been at some point. On the uh, graffiti here, there's a water line. 
So uh, I guess when uh, this river really flows, it really flows and it gets quite deep. Now, this is the Humber Bridge, uh, the pedestrian one. And the last time I was on that bridge was quite a few years ago, probably at like 12, 13. And I took a really good photograph on that bridge. And I'm gonna show you that photograph right now. I took this during the uh, Toronto Air Show uh, quite a few years ago. I used to do aviation photography. I used to love doing stuff like this. And I managed to get this great image of the uh, Blue Angel. One of the Blue Angels, fantastic. Taken from this bridge. Looking that way, I think. Yeah, I was, I was looking that way. Anyway, back onto Lake Ontario we go. which currently is abandoned, right? Uh, closed down quite a few years ago. So we're going to see, if we can get out, see how far we can get around Ontario Place. So this should be interesting. Looking forward to this one. Once upon a time, Ontario Place was a very, very, very popular place. Even though it became a bit of a white elephant for a while, uh, it, it was very popular. And uh, it's just been sat here vacant and just wasted away. So, uh, we're going to check it out right now. Is the old log flume, I think. Did you have a water ride here, the log flume? I think that's the back of it right there. So I'll put a link in the uh, description below of a video I watched about uh, six weeks ago of Ontario Place. I came across it on YouTube literally just by accident. And it was a really, really good uh, detailed video. Uh, of the history of it, how it started off and how it became a bit of a white elephant. It became popular, then it died off and uh, never really got going due to Canada's Wonderland. It kind of, Canada's Wonderland really took the sting out of this place. Water's getting clearer, but shallower. All right. See how far I can get around. Ooh, the wind is just blowing me. Now I know this place, uh, the Budweiser stage. Used to be known as the Molson Amphitheatre. Uh, came back here, 2013. Uh, yeah, I came to see Mumford and Sons here. It was an absolutely brilliant show. It was actually right near the front as well, which was nice. Uh, first time they've been there. There's a really good venue for that. Really good show. This is, of course, it's all part of the uh, Ontario place but it's the only thing that's still open and operational. Well, it was until COVID hit. Uh, maybe they're gonna open again soon. Gotta have the uh, customary uh, coffee on the sea -Doo. Here at Ontario Place. 
By the way, it smells in this area. We're at the far end of it and it smells of poo. So anyway, we're gonna drink this and head back out onto Lake Ontario and make our way over there to the city and then the airport. So uh, let's go. Pollution. R. <laughs> C E G G E C R. That's just pollution going into the lake now, right? That's why balloons should be banned around here. R. Oh, we've got, a, we've got an A. There's an A there as well. That's just sad. Someone literally just released that from over there. We just saw them come up. That is really, really bad. That is now going to just pop at some point, end up in the lake, and get some animal will get tangled up in it, and it'll just be nasty. Or even worse, it'll get tangled up in someone's boat as well and screw it up. Sad. Anyway, look where we are. So just wipe the, uh, the water off. Yep. There we go. All right, uh, Toronto Island Airport, also known as Billy Bishop Airport. Uh, here's a plane coming up right now. As I talked to you, a little float plane. Here he comes. Uh, CN Tower, and here's our little float plane just taking off. It's all happening down here right now. There's a good chance that's probably going up to Georgian Bay. Now, Billy Bishop Airport is uh, the home of Porter Airlines, and with COVID going on still, uh, Porter Airlines is grounded right now. Uh, so all their planes are parked up way over there. Uh, we might get a bit closer to them shortly, but as of right now, they're too far away to see. So we're gonna, we're gonna drive around here into the city and uh, see what we can see. So let's go. Looks like we've got some kind of party boat going on here. This is the uh, River Gambler coming past. Lots of people on it. Let's see if they'll wave at us, shall we? So we've got a few waves out of the, uh, the River Gambler. The tunes are blaring. I see a DJ in the back. Someone's got some drinks. Well, oh, it's a, yeah, I was going to say, Windsor, Ontario, that boat's from. It's also stationed here, mind you. So anyway, the island's right here for Billy Bishop, the airport. And we're now entering the metropolis of Toronto, home to nearly three million people, the fourth largest city in North America. Uh, the first, come on, do you know your geography? What's the busiest? Which is the largest city in North America? Mexico City, yes, followed by New York. And the third one I want to say is Atlanta, uh, but I know Toronto's number four. Uh, that's the, uh, the ferry which runs between the land, mainland there in Toronto to the island for the airport. And when you're on the water, uh, the ferry has a right away at all times, all the time. If you ignore that, or also you ignore those white markings out there which say keep out, there's a $10,000 fine and they're very strict about it. <laughs> now the good thing about having a sea do and having a permit to be on the water here, you get to go and check places out like this. If another camera comes on. There we go. That up a little bit. Hey, look at this boat from Thunder Bay. Empire Sandy, that is a nice tall ship. I like that. That is really nice.
All right, if you're thinking of coming down to Toronto and touring around, you will need a permit from the Toronto Harbour Master in order to come here legally. Uh, anywhere from the Humber to the other side of Toronto by uh, Scarborough Way, you do need a permit, which is uh, uh, one of these things which I have right here. Now, in order to get that, you just get in touch with the City of Toronto, which I'll put a link in the description below. It costs $30, and that's for the season. And as of right now, there, there isn't a test uh, because of COVID. So what they're going to do, uh, the Harbour Master calls you, and he does, and uh, he'll ask you, you'll spend about 10, 15 minutes on the phone where you're asking a few questions, telling you a few of the rules, and then he'll inform you that you will have to attend the course next year, which I'm looking forward to, because you're going to get to do the man overboard and stuff like that, which I think is really good, and I'll learn some new things. So, but you will need one of these. Uh, if you do not have one of these, there is a fine, and they do go around and check a lot of the vessels around here. So in order to come into the city of Toronto, you will need to get this. And just to remind, and also to let you know, when you speak to the harbour master, Mike, uh, when he calls, apparently he told me and several other people there is no, uh, you, you can't zoom zoom, only putt putt. Or is it, oh, uh, uh, no, only putt putt and no zoom zoom, something like that. So when you're in here and there's some jet skis now coming pretty fast and you've got to keep it below 20, 12 kilometers an hour. So these guys aren't putt putting. We live in a city, yeah, come down to a beautiful waterfront like this. Enjoy the sun and look at the beautiful view of a sailing boat and a few other boats and a few other jet skis. Now I'm getting really hungry and thirsty. I got I mean I got water and Gatorade, but fancy a nice drink. But apparently you can't moor up anywhere along here. And I'm dying for the loo as well, and I really don't want to stand over there and have a pee in the middle of the harbour, so I'll probably get a fine. So uh, we're going to make our way up to the island later. Maybe we'll get something over there. Well, there's a nice shot right there. Look at that. Perfect. a bag of Cheerios. I don't know what flavor they are. They're sweet, they're stale as well. So I'm gonna feed my friends, the ducks. Here come the geese. I want some Cheerios, some flavored Cheerios. There you go, all green. Come on, mate. There you go. Feeding geese off a of sea-doo. How cool is this? There we go. Oh, look at this guy. This guy's got a... Hey, what did they do to you? Your, your name is XC52. There you go. That guy has a name. How cool is this? Cool, eh? Baby. Try and get you some. 
materials. No, we went to a garden, bought something. All right, we just, uh, technically we haven't moored up, but we just pulled over here on Toronto Island. Unfortunately, signs everywhere that you can't anchor, you can't moor, you can't do this unless you have a permit, and we don't have a permit. So we just we just rammed it into the sand and hopefully hope for the best. So uh, we just want to find a washroom basically and uh, a quick bite to eat and we'll get back on our travels again. But uh, yeah, we're in uh, Toronto Island. Quite a few people wandering around. Oops. All right, we just got a takeout from the Carousel Cafe. And we're gonna go and sit by our uh, sea doos and uh, eat. 20 bucks for a burger. My God, what happened to burgers being $10? <laughs> Gee. Duck. I really don't wanna try my IDF just yet, but uh, we have got lots of uh, weed here. So oh, straight in the middle, we should be fine. This will bring us out apparently to a place called Snake Island on the outside of Snake Island. I just used the IDF for the first time and we didn't video it. We sucked up a load of weeds and um, my ski still works. <laughs> we should have videoed it. Still a chance yet, yeah, I might get some more weeds down here, but the IDF worked and it cleared it all out. Uh, ski sounds great again. Right, that might be what I just kicked out. What I didn't like about it, using the IDF, you start going backwards. Cause it goes in reverse and I went into all those weeds over there. So I got a little bit nervous. So anyway, I did it. sticking out. Right, I've stopped. Look at it go. That's going some speed. It's probably about 12, 13 knots out of here already. Some guys up there just on the deck. I got a wave. Nice one guys. That is cool. Heading out probably that way towards the Welland Canal. Uh, BBC Rio Grande, St. John's. Canadian ship. That's cool. That, if I'm not mistaken, is a nudist beach. That is uh, Hanlon's Point, I believe. It's the busiest beach we've seen, and uh, it's probably because it's a nudist beach. Yeah, that's definitely Hanlon's Point. I can see a few buttons from here. You know, you guys just let it all hang out. We're gonna start heading back to where uh, we launched from. So it's goodbye Toronto from this side, and I'm sure I'll be back to explore again. Maybe on a warmer day, but uh, it's a great city to look at from the water. So anyway, we're gonna go way, way back down there somewhere. And the winds are still blowing. There's gonna be a lot of footage I've had to edit out of this because the wind's just been so bad today. Uh, but overall, it's been fantastic. So. Uh, 
we're gonna head on back and uh, see you down there. Into the sunset we go.